Herzlich willkommen, mein Name ist Claudia Hoppe, dies ist Folge 24 meines Impro-Podcasts. Ähm, erneut ein Podcast auf Englisch, diesmal mit der wundervollen Inba Lori aus Israel. Ich bin etwas erkältet, wie man vielleicht hört, es tut mir leid, ich hoffe es hat keinen zu großen Einfluss auf die Qualität dieser Aufnahme. We will see. And now I will switch to English. As already mentioned, with me is the fantastic Inbal Lori from Israel. Hello, yeah. Inbal. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, the first question, I mentioned it. Um, I have some question with, uh, questions which are a bit maybe on the political side. Um, so... Uh, life in Israel, how is it right now, considering oh. the situation in the Middle East? Uh. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's really hectic right now, I think, also because there's election on the 20th of March. So everybody is really like uh, trying to get, uh, you know, influence the public, but nobody's doing it with uh, like an agenda. They just, you know, speak up things, saying like radical stuff and mm. trying to get the public, uh, you know, to follow them. But nobody knows what um, what's going on. But there's a lot of big issues. And I think the scariest thing, and I use the word scary because it is scary, is that I think the population, the, the citizens are dividing more and more into left and right. And the right people somehow get more and more crazy. <laughs> And the left people are also crazy, yeah, but uh, there's less of them. So uh, it's really, I don't know what's going to happen. And I can say that I'm bothered by it quite a bit. Okay. And would you generally, um, or do you generally have the impression that people are more scared with all this uh, ISIS terror stuff and no, I what is going on? No, I don't, ISIS, I don't think ISIS scares Israel because, first of all, ISIS wants to get rid of uh, the... Uh, other Arabs, which are not uh, the other Muslims, who are not Muslims as they are, and then uh, Israel is not on their top list. Also, Israel has quite a good security thingy because we're used to it. So I don't think I'm not scared of ISIS. No, I'm uh, more scared of not resolving the conflict within Israel with the Palestinians and having it affect the Israeli society to a certain point where there's actually a civil war within the Israeli. Uh, society. So that scares me way more than ISIS. But ISIS, yeah, they're complete. Can you curse here? Yes. <laughs> they're completely <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> completely <laughs> fucked up. I, I, I guess understand. they are. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I saw agree. today on uh, on uh, YouTube how they, uh, they, they smashed uh, statues in uh, mm. Mosul. Yeah, I've seen this on oh TV. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. What's up? I mean, mm. I don't know. Have more <laughs> sex. I don't know. Do something. <laughs> but loosen up. What do you... I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah speaking about uh, loosen up, how is it to uh, improvise in Israel for you? Mm. Or generally? It's great. Um, it's uh, great. Where I do the shows with my group and we're doing like the professional improv stuff that we do. I mean, not talking about corporate improv or like, you know, but... When we do our thing, <laughs> then I love it. Uh, I have really good partners over there in Three Falling, and there are some other improvisers which are not in my group. But when we perform together, it's it's really nice. I actually miss improvising in Hebrew now because I've been here for <laughs> like almost two months, and so oh. <laughs> I kind of miss it a little bit. And you said you are on a half-year quest right now. So what does that mean? Are you going to be in Germany for the next month or travel yeah. around Europe? Ah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The thing is that uh, <laughs> I don't have a European uh, citizenship, so within 180 days, I can only be here 90 days. Mm -hmm. So I have like a three months tour planned in a way, and then I have to find what do I do with the other three months? Mm -hmm. Where do I go? Unless I get uh, some kind of artist visa or else I have to check it out. But yeah, so I'm basically out. I might come back to visit, you know, to teach, but until July, I'm... I gave away my apartment. I gave away most of my uh, possession, books, wow. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> See. Okay. And and the main purpose of your visit is then obviously to teach here. To in... teach and perform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. And um, how many times have you actually been to Berlin already? Do you remember? First of all, Berlin is my favorite city in the world. <laughs> and uh, no, it's not. Uh, 
<laughs> As an Israeli, I sometimes feel a little bit, uh, 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 not bad, but a little bit conflicted to say it because it's like, oh, but Berlin and the whole past. And I'm like, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> it's still like, I really love this place. Whenever I land here with the airplane and then I get on the whatever, U band or whatever, I immediately I have a smile on my face. <laughs> And uh, I think Berlin has been extremely good to me as well. Tfu, 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 yeah. I mean, like, I always been here on a, on a, almost, yeah, maybe not always. Whenever I got here, it was was related to improv. I always came to do my art here in a way. Uh, I was always welcomed on the best way and the best side and met amazing people and had really, really good experiences. And, um, and now I actually know my way around town and that, mm. that I love. Oh, like, cool. <laughs> you know how to get from place to place. And I feel like, wow, the, after Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, this is the city that I know best, I think, in the world. <laughs> and I'm really proud of myself. Oh, cool. So I think it's the fifth time to answer your question. Oh, yeah. And, and do you remember also, when was the first? Time? Of course, yeah. the Berlin Improv Festival of 2000. And ten, I think, yeah. Okay, so and um, is there something you like best about Berlin? You said it's your like a third favorite city in the world, kind of. I like the public transportation. <laughs> really, I love it. <laughs> what do you love about it? I want to marry the public transportation. <laughs> and what do you love about it? <laughs> the fact that it gets it's so easy to get from place to place, and the fact that uh, yeah, you can just be in boom boom from one place to another and it's on time and you don't have to wait too long and it's like functioning and working and i love it <laughs> well, okay i think we're pretty spoiled because i was taking the public transit today and i was thinking oh my god i hate this no, so yeah. much I'm sure. <laughs> it's so crowded it's never on time <laughs> No. no, but you take it probably on the uh, on the hours of like people when people go to work. Right? Uh, probably yeah, probably it's. Uh, I take it as really a tourist, you know. Mm. No, 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 no. So it's different. And also, I think that when you live in a city and you're a resident of a city, you just love to hate things about the city. <laughs> it's part of your thing. It's part of your you know legal right as a citizen of the city to hate stuff and love the fact that you hate them. Yeah, is that the same in Israel? Oh, in Israel, I hate everything. I hate everything. <laughs> everything I hate. And in Tel Aviv, I had so much stuff. I can like walk around for days hating. But then I realized that I also love this city a mm. lot. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of stuff to love about it. Yeah. I think after all, our public transport is not so bad in Berlin. <laughs> and believe me, one day in Israel, one week in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, or in Jerusalem specifically, oh my God, the, public, the public transportation there is a nightmare. <laughs> nightmare. Like the city. <laughs> it's this crazy city, crazy public transportation. And, and you live in Tel Aviv, not in Jerusalem. I was born in Jerusalem. I lived there until I was 24, mm -hmm. which is also a city that I have a strong love and hate relationship with and then i moved after i finished acting school i moved but then the last seven years i think i live in jaffa mm -hmm. which is was part of tel aviv it's in tel aviv but it's a part of tel aviv it's a mixed city of arabs and jews mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and when did you start to improvise actually in 2001 Mm -hmm. And you mentioned you did an um, acting school. Yeah, I went and, to. Uh, and and is this where you started to improvise, or uh, where where did you start and how? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I just remembered. It's a funny question. Where did you start to improvise? Because when I was starting to do my solo show, then I remembered a story uh, that happened when we were, I think, in a first or second grade. They took us uh, on, fr from the school to this educational theater day. And uh, there was this woman, an actress, who was explaining how, how you do theater. And she said, uh, nobody gets up on stage and do a show without having a text and without rehearsing first. And I was like, really, seriously, I think maximum second grade. And I go like, yes, yes, you do. And she said, no, no, you don't. You need to prepare and you need to know the text. I said, no, you don't. And she said, uh, okay. And I said, I can show you. And she said, okay, come to the stage and show me. I just went up on stage and I improvised like a scene. I improvised like a play. And uh, and then she was like, yeah, okay, it's doable, you know. And when I thought about it, I think it's the first time I did, well, it's maybe not the first time I did improv, but it was like the, I I was always drawn to that kind of art where I can just go up on stage and 
play with what I have at the moment. And and when did you like formally start to do this and like learn it and um, perform? So in school we were doing a little bit of improv as you know as uh, in school I mean the acting academy I was in because of school uh, we were doing it. Um, informally and not by the Kit Johnston's law, you know, just go up and just improvise, which was totally different from how I perceive impro today. Um, and then after I finished, I was joined by another Israeli group I asked me to join them. And uh, we were just training ourselves because it was 2001. We were very isolated because the internet wasn't even invented in 2001. <laughs> you know, you couldn't just watch other groups doing stuff on YouTube, you're like, there's a thing and there's short forms and uh, you should say yes. And there's this book by Keith Johnston and uh, uh, one of my friends, Amitai Miloy, is like an autodidact guy. So he was like learning how to do improv and then just uh, rehearsing with us, you know. And we didn't know what we were doing. We wanted to move to long form. We had no idea what it was. We were trying it and trying it and trying it and failing in it and hating it and going back to smoking and, you know, until, until we got uh, a view of the international scene. And this is where we, I think, were all on a better track. Uh huh. And, and for how long was that phase roughly going on where you uh, said you were trying and trying and failing again? Our first international festival was in 2007. So it's like six years, five and a half years of like performing. We were really good. We were doing really good short forms and really interesting heralds, but we were, something was missing. And the thing that was missing is to see other people do it. So you can have a reference. Then you can realize what it looks like from the outside and then realize what, what, more you need or where else it can go that that was it mm -hmm. and um, besides the acting school you were mentioning what's your like educational background or do you have any other it's acting um, it's just three years of acting school and uh, a little bit of writing because I write as well uh -huh. so I'm a writer and an actress I guess okay and what kind of stuff do you write I wrote uh, All kinds of stuff. I had a one woman show that I wrote and acted in. I was writing for other stuff in theater. I wrote for television series. I know right now I'm working on writing kids play. Like every month there's another kids play. I wrote many shows that were, we always, we had a few years where we were having a show every week on stage in Jerusalem and we had to write it, rehearse it, then choose another topic, write it, rehearse it. There was a lot of writing there. So yeah, quite a bit of writing as well. Okay, so more like drama writing, not fiction. Uh, more, uh, not I wouldn't Or, call it uh, drama because a lot of uh, it was comedy, but uh, for stage and television. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And um, do you have uh, something like a favorite improv trainer? Tim Orr, hey, hello, hi, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, uh, what makes him your favorite trainer? Well, first of all, I think he's the best. I think he's the most serious ones from the ones I've met so far. Uh, he has the most experience. He ha he is uh, totally invested with his heart in this thing. He really loves it. Uh, he really knows how to teach. And also, I think in his workshops, what he's doing, which is amazing, he enables a, a, a space and a working environment in which people can really exceed the next level of their improv all right so he like he's not pushing you into it you're not feeling like he's like on your back you know making you do it but <laughs> the environment the, the atmosphere that he creates and the set of mind that he has or the frequency if you like it is really enabling and then people can really almost without an effort i think but from the place of joy and curiosity get to the next level of what they did so far And that is that is one hell of a gift, you know, to mm. be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I mean, we we did the um, naked stage yeah. workshop with Tim uh, at the beginning of last month. And uh, I yeah. brought him to Israel twice. Uh -huh. Once was in 2009, and the other one was just after the the <laughs> on the and the day the war ended in Israel in July 2014. He was there. The next day he was there, and on both times. He made a very significant change to the Tel Aviv Impro scene. Mm -hmm. in, like, in what sense? I mean, in, in the sense that of course, he was given a lot of workshops to all kinds of levels. And each level was 
in the next level after that. So cool. everyone, like we understood long, <laughs> the first time he was there, we realized long form, like we never understood it before. This time, the naked stage, another complete leap in the way you understand long form. And for other people, he did the wear workshop, which was like people also. Anyway, <laughs> okay. very big leap after his year. Hmm, interesting. And the main group you're performing with in Tel Aviv is uh, Three Falling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how long does that group exist? Three Falling started at 2008, 2009. I'm really bad with the years. Oh, okay, but around that time. Yeah, uh -huh. we were two two actors who were in another uh, impro group and decided to uh, and that group didn't work anymore we just didn't have the venue anymore so we stopped working and then uh, we decide, decided that it's time for us to do the duo show that we always dreamed of doing <laughs> <laughs> so three falling is just two people then so it's me and Molly Schulman which mm -hmm. is an Israeli improviser it started as a duo with a pianist then it became a duo with a dj itamal tso which is our dj until today and he's amazing and then we added to it's a doc and alon neumann and now we're four people in a dj mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay yeah. and do you perform uh, with all four people or is it still just do shows you do sometimes me and muli have a uh, urge to do a duo and then we just you know, get a venue and we do it. But most of the times it's the four of us, unless someone can, you know, and then we're three or, yeah. And how often do you perform? Once a month, I think we have a, a show, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you're here also in March for the Gorillas Improv Festival, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, well, since when are you joining this Gorillas Festival? Or how many times have you actually joined it? I think this is my fourth time. Yeah, mm -hmm. fourth. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, what's this year's topic? Do you know? I don't know. Is because there a I try to, yeah, I tried to find it on the internet and I couldn't. And I thought, like, ah, I'm going to ask in my group. Oh, I feel <laughs> she so. Will know. <laughs> I don't know. I know that there's the thing with the Hoffmans. Did you did you hear about that? Like, we're gonna no. There's a family that's called the Hoffmans, and we're gonna play them in different time periods. Mm -hmm. uh, so the 1990s, the 2014, 2026. Uh, sorry, 9026. 926 and, and another time period, I think just after the the Second World War and perhaps during the Cold War, something like that. So there are different time periods and different casts are going to play the different times. So I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and with topic, I meant stuff like be, uh, like Say Yes. I think last year it was ah, Say they Yes. They asked me to translate then, something. Um, I think I kind of plan. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Kind of plan. Kind plan? Uh -huh. I think that's it. Because oh, she yeah. asked me to translate it to Hebrew. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And of course, the letters got her wrong. And so I hope there won't be any problem with the T-shirt, <laughs> with the Hebrew letters <laughs> being from the, to, from the uh, back to the front. And um, you mentioned this Hoffman thing. Are there any uh, highlight shows you would recommend to definitely see? So this Hoffman thing, it's different shows. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Every night is a different time period with a different cast. Uh, I know that the National Theater of the World are come of the yeah the National Theater of the World are coming from Toronto. So I don't know if they're given a showcase, but if they are, definitely. I know that Rama Nicolas from Australia is coming, and I think Naomi and Rama at the same festival. This is like a fucking dream. <laughs> <It's> so cool. <laughs> you know? Such two amazing improvisers. And actresses at the same festival. It's amazing. Oh, I'm cool. really looking forward to it. <laughs> and do you also give workshops during the festivals? Yeah, I give uh, 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 respect is the name of the because I come of, from the area of the world where we show much, tr much respect to one another. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my topic. <laughs> Maybe I have something to teach in that. <laughs> and, and what's your plan, like your schedule for this workshop, or what will be the, the content? If you had to give a sales pitch, what would you yeah, say? I think um, I'm building it right now. Yeah, I'm thinking about it, because it's the first time I'm going to do it, and I actually created it for the festival. So... I think, yeah, there's the level of to say yes and to listen to your partner, da, 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 da. but I think is also to take it to the other level of generosity where, we, where you could, that you could show it on stage, you know, not just saying yes, no, 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 also maybe saying even no, but to take it to the other level of really seeing the person that stands be, uh, 
in front of you and what he re she or he really needs right now to make the scene work or to make their character go go good yeah mm -hmm. stuff like that mm -hmm. um and then uh regarding the festival how or how is it decided um what cast is in what show like who plays in what show i don't know oh okay how is it usually decided is in it the just in the yeah festival? in the festival ah i think you just uh usually yeah Okay, I thought you meant about the Hoffmans, but no, 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 like, no. Uh, we get there, and uh, and that's the funnest, that's the most fun thing to do. You get there, and then they go over the whole show's program with you, and you just say what you want. You fill up this this Excel, I don't know, uh, thingy, and you write where you want to be, and then Christoph uh, Jungmann just uh, puts you there, if oh. it's possible, and if not, then not. But mm -hmm. yeah. And do you have a very busy schedule this uh, at this year's festival? I don't know it yet. Because, ah, okay, uh, because you haven't signed up at the Excel thingy. Ah, it's okay, happening on the first day of the festival, uh -huh. but not as busy because last year I was teaching like three days in the end of the, and this, this year's in law, and it's just one day. Mm -hmm, <laughs> so mm -hmm. Not over busy, I guess. Okay. And what do you do the other time if you're not teaching or if you're not performing? Uh, as I know myself from the festival uh, lifestyle, probably sleeping. Okay. <laughs> sleeping and eating. <laughs> Getting over a hangover. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how often does the cast come together and train for a certain show or do they train at all if they perform a of show course. Uh -huh. yes yes i mean it depends on the format of course if it's a format that you could just discuss before then then that's fine but the hoffmans for instance has a uh, uh two days uh rehearsal for it with a special workshop and uh and this is then for the entire cast i think i think the entire mm -hmm. cast is going to do it uh-huh so that everybody is able to to play in any of the shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who's uh, who's leading that workshop? Do you know, or is it like self organized, like everybody's contributing? I do know, but I do not remember. Aha, okay. I got the mail, and it says who's going to lead it, <laughs> but I don't remember now. But it's okay. Uh huh. I guess. Uh huh. And in the in the previous years, the workshops that they do, which are similar to this Hoffman thing, is it uh, led by somebody from the Gorillas or somebody from the festival cast who's uh, coming to Berlin as well? I think this one is by the Gorillas. Uh, but last year we also had other people uh, introducing stuff. So it really depends what the format is. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if somebody brings their own idea, ah, well, Maya Dekeleva last year did the the impro meta impro, mm -hmm. and that was her thing, right? Mm -hmm. So she gave us a workshop. We we did a very long rehearsal before that about how sh how it should be done, and then so if you bring your own thing, I suppose you're the one giving the workshop ah, about it. Okay, and this Hoffman thinks it's then the gorilla, so they will they will probably. Just I think although I saw Marco there, so I'm not sure how Marco is involved. Mm -hmm. Marco from uh, Stra from Strasbourg. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe, I don't know, I really don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, nice. And when you teach yourself, what is usually the focus of your workshops? Do you have a specific focus that you focus on? Yeah, I think um, um, this is something that I'm just figuring out now. Um, if it's beginners, then my focus is like to 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 have them relax, really. To help them feel comfortable and, and, and relaxed on stage, you know? So if they choose to, um, perf to, to, to portray a hectic character, it is the character which is hectic and not them. So for them, first of all, is just slow down, chill out almost, like enjoy the fact <laughs> that you're on stage and relax. Don't get, don't get, um, hectic over it and you know don't you? and how do you do that do you have certain tricks that you do so people them, actually get relaxed i make them feel really comfortable with one another I and then them, i beat the shit out of them and then i beat the shit out of them <laughs> no. <laughs> no, <Sorry>. no. <laughs> it's okay i i make them feel like they could trust one another and i really shift the focus into don't be there for yourself but be but there for, be the, there other for the other person to help. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and also uh, look and see everything that they that they do. And, and does that work? Because I find it sometimes um, difficult, especially that thing that you were just mentioning, this ego thing. Like, be not there for yourself. Be there for the other person. Your focus should be that the other person is well and is um, going along. And if they have troubles moving along, help them. 
you know, and not focus on yourself like, oh, how do I look like now in that moment? Do I look good? Oh, fuck, maybe I don't look good. You know, like this kind of thing mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah, one of the hardest things, I think, to um, to make people feel. So this is exactly the thing, I think, in a way. It's like, and, and it's really easy. It's easier to do it with beginners because they're not like already in the, you know, metrics. So you can really influence the the, the the starting point of their work and that is that the 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 attention or the energy that you bring to stay to the stage is is not about is not is outside of you in a way um and and therefore you are not over consumed with how I, what i do or what i look but you breathe yeah you 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 don't forget to breathe you 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 don't forget to look at people's eyes and those two things immediately ground you Okay, and when you do that and you're a little bit grounder, you have more ability to see what's going on around you. You're more able to see the details that goes out around you. And then your focus shifts naturally from being consumed with yourself to being consumed with what's happening. And be interested to show curiosity towards what's happening. So the, the, the combination of these things, if you, you can work with beginners on it. So that's like really, really cool because then they, and they actually say it at the end of the workshop, they come in and say, I came to do the workshop because I wanted to be funny because I wanted to see what I can do. Na, 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 na. And I realized that it's not about that. It's about me having a mutual experience with someone else and being there for them and they're being there for me and we are enjoying each other's company on stage. And I think for that, it doesn't matter if they do improv or not. It, it, it doesn't matter if they do good improv or bad improv. Just the idea that they can have this human experience. Mm -hmm. This is for me, yeah. the, the whole thing. And with more advanced people, because I'm an actress and because I got to direct and because I work a lot of, I can work really good with actors, I think, then I would usually put the focus on the quality of performance of the stuff that you bring out of yourself, like in the critical moments of like, Are you being real? Are you being really happy now? Are you being really emotional now? Are you being really happy or sad? But from a very uh, deep place, which is not marking it, but really being it. And um, which is also very concentrated. And again, not on yourself, not at yourself, but at the scene. You're telling a story right now. This, it, it's bigger than you. It's not about you. But do you really give it everything it needs? And how do you communicate? How do you take the, oh, can I quote something? <clears throat> Bless you. I just remember today that I uh, heard a uh, quote by, na, 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 the artist is presence. What's her name? The Yugoslavian. Uh, she said performance is all about creating a state of mind. And it's the moment when the, the, energy or the state of mind of the of the performer and the state of mind of the audience becomes one and there are many ways to do it but one of them is to work with full concentration and allowing yourself really to experience what you experience in a very connected level of and that and that way when you're there the audience is there mm. and this is what i try to bring more in, advanced improvisers to do mm -hmm. to really be there Oh, yeah. And you yourself, as far as I remember from what I've seen, you're actually playing very, um, yeah, very lively, um, vivid uh, characters, very unique characters. So oh, yeah. <laughs> as a, or at least that's my impression as a performer, that's mm -hmm. one of your um, uh, strengths. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah at least it, it feels like because you don't... Mm, or I don't see so many people who can play that unique characters. They have maybe one or two or three or often just one and they have different moods they can play. But um, with you, it's more that you play distinguishable characters. So I was curious if this is like a focus of yours that you like work on in any kind of way, be it like you think about it or you rehearse something when you're alone or whatever. Hmm, no, but uh, I can say that a lot of the theater work that I've done is based on uh, sketches that towards the years and a lot of them I was writing. So I, I suppose in a way I wrote to myself a lot of characters 
And then people who knew me and were working with me was writing a lot of characters to me. So the range of characters was built probably uh -huh. during that process. Ah, okay, so you have like a stock of characters that you then uh, pull I guess, from. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's always nice to challenge yourself with something that like, you know, oh, yeah, let's do a character like this and see how we do that. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's always the, 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 the danger of, of it leaking into something that you already did. So you need to really stabilize it, you know, when you rehearse on it. And then, yeah, and then the, the more you do it, the more flexible you get in a way. But for me, nowadays, like in the last, I think, one and a half year, maybe even two, the, the challenge in improv is to get up on stage and and play me mm -hmm. you know be a believable and as as an as a natural character as a as myself and 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 believe that that could be interested enough interesting enough or strong you know or yeah that i can create that state of mind thingy with the audience when i don't do a character mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, besides what you were saying already about your um, teaching and about your classes, if you had an improv philosophy, how would you describe it in a couple of words? I think I have one. I don't remember it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Okay. If, no, if not, never mind. I just uh, thought you had like something... Uh, crisp that you uh, want to tell or have something to tell. Something we can make a sticker out of. Yeah, for example, or a bag or something like that. Or <laughs> merchandise. Yeah, That's merchandise. merchandise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, um, if somebody is going to visit Tel Aviv, uh, besides Three Falling, what groups would you recommend people to watch over there? Uh, there's a group of young guys who just started up and they're called Foreplay. And they they're based in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, and they perform in those two places. And they there is another group uh, called Glama Alpaca, which is also one of the how do you, not old, but because they're old as we are. So how do you say when <laughs> veteran? I don't know how do you call it when somebody's been around for a while. I don't know. So they're one of the I know the word in Hebrew, but not the newbies. No, not the other new the, <laughs> the, the old opposite piece? of the old bees. <laughs> So they have been around for many years and they're very good. And um, yeah, I think these are the ones right now. Ah, and there's a group of girls right now, of five girls. Ah, and yeah, so it's called um, Bona. And then there's Shirley and the Cans, which I advise people to see. And there are da, 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 Lama Bati. Mm -hmm. So some of them are amateur groups who are really, really good. And the, re and the two first ones that I said are professional actors groups. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one as well, the girls pro is also professional actors doing improv. So yeah, the scene is growing slowly, 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 but it is growing and that's so fucking great. And uh, are you also performing in locations outside Israel? And I don't mean like in, in Germany or Belgium, but like around the Middle East yeah. area. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know your history? No, no. we don't. <laughs> okay. No, I'm, I'm really not uh, too familiar, I have to admit. I know it's very tense, but I've never, never I actually wish, been there. I wish, I wish, I wish. Yeah, because my next question is actually attached to this and um, I mean you don't have to you don't have to answer it if you think it's too sensitive but um, I remember that last year there were people here from Lebanon from Beirut I think yeah, really. and I don't know who said that to me I don't know if it was you or somebody told me um, that the the two of you cannot perform together on the same stage or something like that We could perform together, but Lucien uh, made it very specific that there are no pictures to be taken and it cannot be up uploaded because if the Lebanoni government sees that, he can get to jail. Really? Yes. Wow. I thought that Lebanon was kind of a free country kind of That's thing. That's the free uh, version of Islam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Because yeah. we have no diplomatic relationship with them, I think it would if it would be an um, Egyptian person or... No, Egyptian, I don't know today, but... Jordanian, it would be better, but Syrians, Lebanonese, Iraqis, Iranis. Uh. Hmm. So does does the general situation, the political situation in the Middle East, then actually limit your options as a performer? It, no, because it's not like um, you know we had uh, no because it's like not having something and then it doesn't limit you. You know what I'm saying? 
Because if you don't have it, then mm. you never think about yeah. it as an option. Yeah, I, I think it's maybe similar to like, because people ask me, um, how was it with the wall? Because I grew up in West Berlin and when I was a child, there was actually a wall around this city. And um, as a child, it's of course uh, strange that the world like literally ends at some place. Yeah. But if you don't miss something in the island where you're in and you know you can leave the island at any time, then there is no, no big deal about it. At least for me as a child, there wasn't. I agree. So in a term of, we could have performed all over. Yeah, sometimes you can think about it, but it's not like we're missing it because we just don't know what it would be like. You know, the only thing I'm, I think Israelis feel is that we feel very strangled because your only option right now to uh, travel outside of Israel is to get up on a plane or a boat mm. and move to another continent because you cannot cross almost the border to wow. any, you can go to Jordan, you can go to Jordan and it's great. But I was just talking to my friend when I was in Thailand now. She said that the whole plane was full of uh, families, young families with kids on the plane to Thailand. And she said that it was so clear to her that if the situation was with Egypt was better and the Sinai Desert would still be a touristic, our touristic backyard uh, without being having Al-Qaeda sales <laughs> running around, these people wouldn't have to travel 10 hours to another country on a plane with, you know, no, 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 could we just take a bus for four hours or, or a plane for one hour and then be in Sinai? Mm. And that was the, this was and is still the best place in the world for me. Mm. But we can't go there. So that I miss. Yeah. This is something. Yeah, that sounds really spooky. It really makes me uh, shiver to hear that you cannot actually cross the border like in a car or bus or anything. <laughs> no. It's really spooky. Yeah. And, and there <sighs> used to be a train that went all the way from Syria to Lebanon and then Israel and then to Egypt. And it was like, like I think it was connecting Turkey to Cairo. Oh, maybe I'm like getting it all wrong. But in the Ottoman Empire and also in the British Empire, that, you know, when there were no borders and no, yeah, you can say ever since Israel is there, everything has become more tense. You could say that, but uh, yeah, mm. were you topic times like this? And um, have you always been living in Israel or was there a time in your life where you lived somewhere else? No, and this is why I'm on a half a year quest right now. Because <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> I've never left Israel for more than one month. Uh huh. And um, and eventually I got a lot of invitations from outside of Israel to come and teach and perform. And I dis and also I have to say that after that last war that was in the summer, I felt like I already need to get away for a little while because I felt so much uh, pressure being there and so much tense being there. And I couldn't objectively figure out what I think about it. And I decided that the best way to think about it is to get away for a little while. And maybe my opinions won't change, it doesn't matter, but just to be able to breathe a little nicer and, and it, it's working. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, That's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So could you figure out your thoughts or ideas about the situation then in the time you are away? It didn't change. Mm. Uh, I basically still think that people there are completely fucked up and, uh, <laughs> on both sides and uh, they they are... Um, 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 how do you say it? Um, they are completely off track. Hmm. And it's it's really sad being in Europe a lot of times, or I don't know, yeah, but Europe, especially West Europe, because um, you see, like, this continent was built on a lot of blood, you know, there's like tons of people buried here in so such terrible ways, and hmm. <laughs> many have died during centuries and centuries. And now so there is some kind of prosperity on the other side of, you know, a, a more humanistic uh, social thingy. I don't know. So I'm sure I'm, I don't see the, the dark colors, of course, because I'm not, I don't live here. But from the outside, from what I do know, from the people that I do meet, from what I do see, I can see how it's much more relaxed and it's uh, enabling in a way. It's a much more enabling society. And... Um, and it's always sad for me to see that uh, how, in a way, the Middle East is, well, not in a way, but the Middle East is behind it. And I understand that it's nothing, per it's not personal, you know, it's just that now is the turn of this part of the world to be fucked up. 
the Europeans shed their blood. Mm. Now it's uh, time for us to shed our blood. And it, it's like that. It's, mm. it's yeah, it's, like a, that. it's a pity that it's always on the, um, uh, I don't know the English word, but for the... Um, uh, 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 that you always spill so much blood in order to figure something out. I yeah. mean, and the question is, is that really necessary? But um, let's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's let's, a question, but uh, I think it is. Humanity is still not in a point where uh, where it can uh, evolve out of a non-conflict thingy. Some has, but some has not. Mm. And of course, if you ask me what is the next step of the human race, of course, it's that. It's when we understand that death and conflict and war and violent is not necessary. And I think we're definitely going there, but I think we're also at the same time splitting to two halves, the ones who are getting more violent and the ones who are figuring out... It's not working yeah, like that. It's useless. Uh, so uh, let's see what happens. Uh, and um, we already talked about you uh, will stay here a bit longer, but for how long will you stay in Berlin for now before you continue your travel to other countries? So tomorrow I fly to Cologne. Mm -hmm. for the weekend for the festival and then I come back and then I'm here until the da, 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 end of the festival the 23rd mm -hmm. and then you continue your uh, journey around Europe then I go to a place in uh, Germany maybe you know Glosser is there anything called Glosser Glosser mm, just I to can't remember Glosser just me and a friend, we're going to go there for a week to the, I think it's supposed to be a place with nature mm -hmm. we wanted to have some nature mm -hmm. then Graz Mm -hmm. Austria, then I come back and, ah, and uh, we have an Imper Embassy show. Mm -hmm. then when? On the 2nd of mm -hmm. April. April? Oh, okay. Let me check it out. I don't want to mislead people here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, when, at what other times can people see you play while you're here in Berlin for the festival? Okay, you said so you don't the festival? know the, yeah, yeah. Probably but you don't know what night. shows you Yeah, exactly. Been. I don't mm -hmm. know. Uh, and then the Imper Embassy on the 2nd of April. Then it's French, then it's Leipzig. Uh-huh. Leipzig, I should say. Leipzig. So that, and that concludes, I think, all the German stuff that I have to do by oh. the end of April. Uh-huh. And the Impro, uh, Improv Embassy show, what is it uh, going to be about? Do you know the format already that you will be playing there? We're discussing it these days, but I think, mm -hmm. uh, but I know that Christoph Jungmann is going to be there and Luisi from the Gorillas, Luisi, Luisa, Luisa, Luisi, oh, come on, because I don't really know her. Mm -hmm. um, we've met very briefly last last year, so but we're working on it. We have to discuss it uh, actually this evening, probably. A little. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, is there? Ah, but I uh, yeah. do know it's going to be based on our childhood memories. Uh huh. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, is there anything else you would like to say to our audience? Any advice or recommendation or whatever message? Not to forget to enjoy. Mm -hmm. together yeah zusammen not uh, enjoy yourself and fuck the rest but like <laughs> not to forget that it's a feeling of, of, of playfulness and it's the closest thing actually to childhood for me improv which is probably Absolutely. why i love it so much yeah, yeah i fully agree it's like it, you know it's like <laughs> in a you know abracadabra when you do magic mm -hmm. so it's actually aramaic language and it means it's kind of similar to hebrew it means um i will create as i talk mm -hmm. it means yeah and uh, it means that if you decide that uh, there will be a pigeon in the box now then there will right and i think in improv and kids we do exactly the same thing we say to each other would you like some tea and then we go to the kitchen and we pour them tea and there is nothing but we say it and we declare it and we go and we do it. And for the kids and for the audience and for us, there is a tea, mm. right? And we're going to sit down and drink it while we have a scene. So we're creating the world as we talk it. And, and it's, first of all, it's very magical, yeah, the fact that it can work. And, because, and, and the second of it is that it's so much close to kids playing and believing completely everything that they say. You know, if you get sometimes to an improv rehearsal, if you don't know who the people are and what they do, it looks crazy. They sit, they mime stuff, <laughs> they act like it's really happening and nothing is happening. It looks like kids playing. And I think this is what I love so much about improv. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Same here. I have one more thing that I want to say. Yeah. Wait, I forgot because I'm talking and then I forget what. I <laughs> ah, maybe it comes. Yeah. 
to your mind still. Um, yeah, do you have an own website? No. Oh. No, I just have the uh, Facebook page of ah, the okay. school in uh, in uh, Israel that uh -huh. I teach in, which is called Impro TLV. Uh -huh. uh, so that's my thingy, right? Impro TLV. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, oh. Impro Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I have. Okay. I guess we leave it here, unless you can remember what you wanted to say. God damn, it's like it's stuck <laughs> like it's on the tip of my tongue. And I, uh, and then it's probably not that important. And I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then uh, nevertheless, thank you, Inba, thank for being you. here thank and um, uh, sharing this uh, information with us and uh, what you're going to do and how you're going to teach and what you're going to do in the festival. Uh, thank you for that. I switch to German now. Mm -hmm. um, das war Folge 24 meines Impro-Podcasts. Mein Name ist Claudia Hoppe. Ich wünsche euch allen einen schönen Frühling da draußen und sage Tschüss. Tschüss.